Okay, so I was getting a, a lot of messages about how to play Rogue and stuff about Rogue in general until I stopped playing even more than a year ago and to make my life easier I decided to make a video so next time when I get such a message I can just link a video and yeah. So we'll talk about gear, entrance, stats, uh, talents, glyphs, um, uh, beast list and rotation in general. So pretty much everything you need to know. Now let's start. So first thing people always ask is do you go for two set or you go for four set? And simple answer is you go for two set um, and you want to use head and you want to use shoulders. Um, for the head you want enchant from Abon Blade uh, with 50 attack power and 20 critical and metagam it's really important uh, it's uh, uh, 21 agility and 3% critical damage increase. For the second part of tier set you want to go with shoulders and you want to go with uh, enchant from uh, Sons of Hodir with uh, 40 attack power and 15 critical. Uh, with having these two items you are enabling two set bonus uh, which uh, set your tricks of the trade ability now to grant you 15 energy instead of costing energy. So basically it's free, it's giving you energy back, it uh, encourages you to use it and it's, uh, it's really really good and we'll talk about that later when we talk about uh, glyphs and stuff. Okay for the for the necklace you want to go with Sindragosa 25 man heroic necklace, there's no enchant for it and uh, for um, second, uh, uh, second best item you can use 10 man Sindragosa heroic with crit and armor pen or as well Woodin as a BOE uh, item that gives you hit is also really nice to start with and hit in general is extremely good start for a rogue, uh, combat rogue at least. Uh, for the cloak, uh, this one is Sylvanas Cunning, it's, it comes from TOGC 25 men, uh, it's heroic one, it's insanity run, uh, sometimes hard to come by, uh, but if you cannot get this one, you can get the 25 men heroic uh, gunship cloak with uh, crit and haste, which is also really really good, or uh, if you don't have that one, the vendor... Uh, cloak with crit and armor pen for the emblems of frost is really nice also to start with as well. Uh, for the chest, uh, beast chest is uh, Iquirus uh, Sack of Wonder, it comes from uh, Gunship 25 man Heroic. Uh, I would still say the, the second beast one is the same uh, chest but from normal mode. Uh, honestly this should be really really easy item to come by, uh, 25 man normal version of this one is also BOE so it's really really easy to get it, gunship extremely easy to do even on heroic so this should not be a problem. Uh, this enchant for it is 10 uh, all stats and yeah it gives you bunch of hit, bunch of expertise which is really really important, we'll talk about that when we cover stats uh, after the gear. Uh, for the um, Wrist, uh, Tosk, uh, Tosk's from uh, Deadbringer 25 man Heroic, uh, Enchant 50 attack power, you can play with Ruby Sanctum Wrists as well if it's on Heroic, then you need to switch some games around, honestly in my opinion not worth it, but yeah, um, I would say this one is the, is the best one you can use. Uh, good substitute for it, uh, TOGC 25 man Heroic, uh, Wrists with uh, I think it's from there, or it's a, in general pattern uh, BOE that you can buy with haste and armor pen. I think you can buy it as well from auction house. It's nice to start with, um, yeah. But pretty much that's it for the wrist. Nothing special uh, for the gloves. Uh, Rot face 25 man heroic, uh, beast gloves for enchant. Obviously, you wanna use um, uh, you wanna use uh, engineering enchant. Uh, which uh, gives you uh, haste proc. Now, let's talk about that a little bit. So, yeah, it gives you uh, 340 haste uh, for 12 seconds every one minute. Uh, 
this is extremely good considering that for example your hay spot is um, one minute cooldown also but you can use it once in fight and once slightly before the fight uh, or pre-potting it as well uh, the duration of speed pot uh, is 15 seconds so three seconds longer than uh, engineering hands buff and gives you 500 haste rating and engineering buff gives you 340 so slightly less uh, haste slightly less duration but you can use it much more during the fight and it's it's just it's insane how good and important this is for your dps and this is why you should must have engineering as a profession uh, also for the cloak i forgot to mention that uh, base enchant is parachute from engineering as well uh, now some people don't know but this enchant as well as nitro boots are also giving you stats even though it's not stated here on tooltip but you can clearly see here that it, it's increasing your agility by 23 uh, also that happens passively and the best enchant you can get beside this one is 22 agility it's one agility up not the greatest upgrade but in general you get that a little bit extra not really noticeable but it's there but you know you have extra effect with parachute with which can come useful sometimes for the belt you want to go with professor 25 man heroic belt uh, enchant is a uh, blacksmithing enchant that gives you extra uh, extra socket so pretty pretty easy uh, to get really cheap also um, and the second one that you can use that is really really good as well is actually fr um, from the vendor for the emblems of frost uh, it gives you uh, armor pen and haste it's a really really good belt um, it's really easy to get it uh, and gives you even more armor pen than this one also better color of sockets so you can do some easier squeezing of the socket bonus so yeah that's pretty much it about that uh, legs faster got 25 man heroic enchant uh, letter working 75 attack power and 22 critical you can buy this from auction house i've been on enchant second best you can get probably is uh, letter working uh, legs with crit and armor pen uh, those are really good but they are good for the starting later on you have uh, anyway too much armor pen you don't even need to game for it so later on the heat prevails over the armor pen because you are already capped on armor pen boots uh, 25 man heroic faster gut uh, enchant uh, that is basis nitro boots beside being the best by far best uh, mobility thing you can have it gives you also 24 critical which is not stated on the tooltip when you see here but yeah so it's really nice to have that second best uh, blood council 20 uh, 10 man blood council 10 man heroic boots slightly better than uh, 25 man normal marugar boots uh, which uh, are giving you yellow sockets and the council 10 man heroic is also 264 item low but gives you red sockets which gives you which gives you a socket bonus for having double armor pen uh, games there but yeah that's pretty much it uh, for that uh, rings uh, obviously you want to go with ashen Vedic reputation ring by getting exalted you will get this version of the ring really easy to get and must have and the uh, second ring, uh, Valitria 25 man heroic. Um, you can play with also with the Ruby Sanctum 25 man heroic ring, it's completely fine. You need to switch some games around and stuff, so nothing really special, nothing really important. Both of those are fine, completely. I prefer to play like this, and yeah, that's it pretty much. Nothing game breaking or changing that you will get with switching this ring. I have it but I, I just like to play like this for the rings uh, for the trinkets uh, I'm sorry uh, you need that bringers will and uh, from that bringer 25 man heroic and um, sharpen their scale 
Violet Scale from Ruby Sanctum 25 Man Heroic. Now, this trinket, even both of these trinkets, even on normal, they are insanely good upgrades. Um, ideally, you want to have them both on heroic, that's what this is. But also, the trinket that is really, really good it comes from 10 Man Ice Crown Heroic uh, from La Lady Dead Whisper. Uh, it's Skull and uh, it's a really really good trinket as well to have. Now the reason why it's really good is because it has the, the golden standard of um, uh, ratio of ICD which is internal cooldown uh, and proc time. Uh, so internal cooldown on that trinket is 45 seconds only and the proc time is 15 seconds. So you have 30 seconds downtime on that trinket which is really really low. And the proc is uh, attack power, which is a raw damage upgrade, and it's easy to 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 track it. It's it procs pretty much on cooldown, and it's easy to prepare your, for example, killing spree when that procs and to get some extra damage from it. Uh, as well, the trinket that works on the same way is uh, actually the Twilight Scale from Ruby Sanctum. Uh, Forty-five seconds. Uh, cooldown, 15 seconds, uptime, attack power, proc, really good. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it about that. For the weapons, uh, main hand weapon, 2.6 slow weapon, X, uh, Lich King 25 man heroic. Um, many reasons why this is beast, obviously highest item level and nothing increases your DPS as a combat rogue as the higher item level main hand weapon. The higher item level your main hand weapon is, the more raw DPS it does. And since everything is scaling from your main hand weapon, um, I mean having this uh, having this X increases your DPS a lot. Uh, also it's X and uh, by being Orc you are perfectly capped on expertise which we will talk uh, really soon when we talk about stats. But yeah, that's for the main hand. For uh, second best in slot, you can go with Deathbringer 25 man heroic sword. It's armor pen, it's hit, great stats, but sword and um, yeah, not X doesn't allow you to cap on um, expertise. Now, much easier to get though, so it's a really good weapon anyway. For offhand, that bring, uh, it's gunship, uh, 25 man heroic, X, really easy to come by, if you don't have this one try to get it on normal, but honestly uh, getting gunship heroic down is something that is really really easy, so you should have no problem with getting this one. And for the, for the crossbow or ranged weapon, or whatever you wanna call it, uh, Lich King 25 man heroic crossbow, obviously second base in slot is 10 man Lich King heroic, A third one uh, Queen Lanatel 10 man heroic gun and uh, fourth one you can even go which is really really good as well, um, Jaraxxus 25 man heroic, now a reason why those are really good, they have one thing in common, they all have socket to give you extra armor pen and they all have armor pen in itself. So, a really good choice is there, obviously this one is the best, highest item level gives you a little bit more stats, but in general you just want that on, from the ranged weapon socket and armor pen as a baseline. Okay, so yeah, obviously for the uh, weapon entrance you will go with uh, Berserking. And instant poison on the main hand, deadly poison on off hand. Reason for this is that your deadly poison stacks, and when it reaches five stacks, if he instead of getting six stack when it procs, it procs instantly your uh, main hand weapon uh, poison, which is instant. So that's extra damage there, as you can see here. Now, the thing is why you want this uh, deadly poison on your offhand is because your offhand is a faster weapon, so it hits faster and there is like, uh, you stack up that, that deadly poison on the target faster, that's pretty much why and that's pretty self-explanatory. Okay, let's talk about stats now. So, 
the most important uh, stat you need to get first is hit there is a couple of the hit cups uh, some that you must have some that you would really like to have and some that you cannot have at all so first of all you need ideally to be uh, spell hit cupped now why spell because spell hit cup uh, allows you for your poisons not to miss ever and poisons are counted as a spell that's why you need 17 percent hit now good thing here is that you have five percent from your uh, talents that you start with five so you need 12 more and while having the shadow priest or boomkin in your aid that will allow you to get three more spell uh, spell hit which brings you to eight which means you need nine percent from your gear in order to be spell hit cupped that's what you must have if you don't have shadow priest or boomkin in your raid you need to have 12 percent hit uh, from your gear which is something that you will have even more later on so that's that's the first thing that you need to make sure that you have uh, after that is secured what you want is as much as possible armor pen now armor pen uh, allows you to do more damage ignoring armor of the enemy which is reducing your damage by ignoring armor you are doing more damage pretty self-explanatory and cup is 1400 armor pen which allows you to reduce up to 100 percent now this is something you really really want to game for it like this is why for example stuff like expertise you don't care about cupping because expertise cup is 26 27 i don't remember anymore 27 is what you will get with this setup anyway so you'll be fine but the thing is expertise reduces the chance to be dodged or parried by x amount of percent and this is cup already so that means that if you do, if you are not cupped if you for example doesn't have this x and you are orc and you have 22 expertise you don't care that you will miss one percent more that's that's not comparable to uh having more armor pen so you should never ever game for expertise the only thing you need that you really need is ikvirus when you have ikvirus that's all you care about because you have even from talents later on you have 10, 10 expertise more so you have ikvirus you have talents and you are fine you don't care if you if you don't have the cup the only way you are cupping your expertise is when you have both axes and you are orc and you have ikvirus and that's it that's the only situation when it's worth cupping your expertise otherwise you don't care you must have ikvirus you must have uh, talents uh, that gives you 10 expertise but that's pretty much it so armor pen after spell hit cup you just game armor pen uh, stack armor pen that's why i said the on start uh, crafting legs from letter working that gives you armor pen are really really good uh, instead of these ones that are really good later on when you already have armor pen cupped but yeah that's pretty much self-explanatory now there is a thing that when you are starting with your fresh character you can go for soft armor pen cup this is hard cup when you have 100 percent all the time soft cup is when you have certain amount of armor pen and then you have something like a trinket uh that procs you armor pen and then you are getting cupped on armor pen uh, with that proc really not worth it the dispatch really not worth it especially in icc you you don't want to do it don't try to do it it's not worth you just want to stack as much as possible and that's it and eventually you will get there and pretty much pretty much it and when you get uh, cupped on armor pen critical you don't care like you just you will just get it passively with gear higher item level more agility more critical and you know that that's it like you never game uh you never 
enchant for it as only on the enchants that are like this and have a little bit of crit in them that's all and from the gear passively that you can get that's it you don't care about like stacking or gaming for uh, crit uh, and that's it pretty much those are all the cups now attack power not for for gaming at all and so what do you do you are you are spell hit cupped you are armor pen cupped you are expertise cupped you have 50 percent critical you have three options you can game for uh, attack power you can game for critical and you can game for hit now gaming for attack power is absolutely not worth it same as critical as i said it's really not important for you to to stack more crit so we will game for hit now even though i said you are spell hit capped that's true but uh, you are never completely hit capped because hit cap for your offhand weapon is 27 percent and as you can see here i have 14 percent and five percent from the talents that's 19 percent i'm still eight percent missing with my offhand this is with offhand only now going above with hit even more and more reduces that offhand missing chance and gives you more hit with your offhand and that's what you want to do now why uh, as you as you can see on your offhand you have deadly poison more hits more stacks the faster it sucks the faster it procs instant poison which is actually doing damage second thing uh, your best dps your best damage the most damage on your recount what it does is actually your auto attack your melee hits the more offhand hits the more melee hits the more melee hits with your offhand or hits with your offhand however you want to call it the more chances to proc combat potency giving you success uh, give uh, gives your successful offhand melee attacks a 20 percent chance to generate 15 energy as well the more offhand hits gives you 5% chance to get an extra attack on the same target after hitting your target with a sword or axe since this is axe more chances for proking this as well okay so that was about the stats hopefully that is uh, easy to understand for now now let's go over the talents and glyphs so first row improved gouge pvp thing you will never use this in pv it's useless so what you want to go is five uh, out of five on dual build specialization pretty much nothing special increasing your offhand uh, weapon damage by 50 percent easy to understand and improve sinister strike reducing energy of uh, energy cost of your sinister strike by five uh, really nice uh, also because the sinister strike is the spell you will use the most so reducing the energy required for it it's always good improved sinister uh, slice and dice uh, duration by 50 percent it's insanely good uh, this is the thing you want to have 100 percent uptime of and having it uh, um, 50 percent longer uh, every time you use it makes it much easier to keep it up uh, this thing increasing parry chance you don't want this it's useless and here five uh, uh, five uh, percent hit which is great uh, as we already explained uh, all about hit now next row uh, this uh, fist weapons daggers critical chance increase you are not using daggers you are not using fist weapons this is useless this is useless as well you cannot even take it because you don't want parry chance but you need one point so you can go on uh, and you are taking one and only one point here reducing cooldown of your sprint and evasion pretty nice to have evasion kind of useless uh, sprint really useful um, and uh, increasing your total stamina by 2% which is a nice survivability thing uh, you you can get there not much but still the best you can get from here next row kick you don't want um, 
improve sprint you don't want this is like a more of a kind of pvp stuff because you cannot silence boss by kicking him or anything uh, so this is pretty much useless uh, here increasing dodge, dodge chance also useless but gives you 10% melee haste and more haste uh, is always nice when you can get it from free uh, aggression increasing damage done by your by your uh, sinister strike backstab eviscerate backstab you won't use but sinister strike and eviscerate dealing 15% more damage is is also nice thing to have and pretty much these are only things in this row that are increasing your damage so that's why you're gonna take those uh, for the next thing uh, you have uh, May specialization here pretty useless as you are not using maces blade flurry really nice cooldown extremely good on aoe really good on single target as well uh, hack and slash gives you 5% chance to get an extra attack on the same target after hitting your target with your sword on X. Since you are using X's, or if you don't have this X, you will use sword from Deadbringer. This is pretty much what you want to have from all of these specializations. Uh, here, weapon expertise, 10%, uh, 10 um, expertise more. What That's what we want, because uh, it's passive, it's from talents, it's not from gear, so that's great. Here, pretty much 10% more damage on Sinister Strike, nothing much to say about it. Adrenaline Rush, really good cooldown, really important cooldown, uh, gives, gives you much more energy, uh, regeneration rate, uh, so you can really have that those bursty windows where you can spam a lot. Uh, and here as well, increasing your energy regeneration rates passively by 25%. Uh, this thing is... Uh, really useless um, it's fear and stun reduction effects so that's for a pvp this i don't want to even comment this one is really good gives your successful offhand melee attack 20 percent chance to generate 15 ener 15 energy it's really nice um, increasing your damage of sinister strike and um, your finishing abilities cannot be touched anymore really nice thing to have as well since this is kind of all useless and we need to have 51 to get killing spree so this is pretty much the most optimal way you are getting it savage combat really really good increase your total attack power by five percent and all physical damage cues to enemy you have poisoned is increased by four percent and this is the buff that others benefit also from so all physical damage while you have poison on a certain target of any kind it's increased by four percent uh, prey of the week your critical damage is increased by 20 percent when the damage is less health than you um, as a percentage of a total health so this is pretty much what should be always active because since the boss takes hit he is less than 100% HP and most of the time you will be on 100% HP so this this is like almost always 100% uptime and killing spree like you are really good cooldown uh, re really good single target extremely good AoE again and yeah that's that's it pretty much about the combat role now the rest of the talent points we want to use in assassination now here you have two two ways you can go about it you can go eviscerate build or you can go rapture build now let me explain the pros and cons of both of those a rapture build is always almost always better a reason why it's not rng because if evis if you use eviscerate and eviscerate crits it will do a lot of damage but if Eviscerate doesn't crit, it will do almost no damage. Like really, you wasted your combo points. If you use Rapture, Rapture will always do a little bit less than Eviscerate when it crits, but much more than Eviscerate when uh, Eviscerate is not critting. And especially if you have Feral Druid in your raid, which you should always have, with uh, debuff um, that gives you 30% uh, more bleed damage, Rapture will be always, always better. And you are not relying on RNG. So here, obviously, 5% crit. This is kind of useless because we are not going Eviscerate build. This is PvP stuff. 
or leveling or pretty much nothing this is pointless next row we need five talents here backstab mutilate this is assassination stuff you don't want to use this uh, here you want to go three out of three ruthlessness gives your melee finishing moves 60% chance to add a combo point on your target okay so whenever you use a finishing move you have 60% chance to have one combo point after that finishing move and that's really really nice it fixes your rotation it is 60% it's not 100% so it's a little bit of RNG but it's more than 50% it's in your favor and more than not you will have that one combo point uh, since we are going for uh, rupture a rupture build uh, this is what we want 30% uh, more damage on rupture next row a lethality increasing the critical damage bonus of all combo point generated abilities to not uh, do not require stealth by 30 percent pretty self-explanatory as well uh, and the uh, last five points you want to go one here in wild poisons uh, and four here in improved poisons now improved poisons improving your uh, chance to apply deadly poison and instant poison pretty self-explanatory so you want to go as much as possible but you want to have one here why one because this one it gives you seven percent more damage uh, uh, by your poisons and that's like really really nice to have going more you can go like also two here three here it's it's both fine but those are two options you can go one four or you can go two two three whatever you like it's pretty much the same i tested both of those so this is what i ended up with but yeah that's pretty much it about the talents and the only thing that is potential uh for changing here is this two here three here instead of one four and that's pretty much it everything else needs to stay the same if you want optimal damage for the glyphs uh let's go with the major glyphs first sinister strike your sinister your sinister strike critical uh strikes has uh, have a, a 50 percent chance to add additional combo point this is must have this is so good the sinister strike is the thing that you will use the most in your rotation and having 50 percent chance every time you use it to generate an extra combo point is insanely good whatever you do you never change this glyph next glyph that i would say also it's peace is a glyph of the of tricks of the trade now what this does is uh, uh, the bonus damage uh, that you are uh, getting from uh, tricks of the trade is increased for four seconds now i think it lasts uh, yeah it lasts six seconds without glyph and with glyph it lasts 10 seconds it's really really good a reason why if you want to have optimal damage as a combat rogue uh, you want to have a, one more rogue with you in raid and both of you need to have this glyph and you need to trade with each other you can look on it like uh, fire mages trading uh, uh, focused magic uh, this is the same thing but instead of just giving the buff to other guy you need to use it every 30 seconds on cooldown pretty much uh 15 more damage for 10 seconds is insanely good that you are get giving to each other it's really really good and you must use it in order to have optimal damage you need to have one more rogue with you if you have three rogues you can still trade with each other but or four or i don't know if you go with that many rogues but two rogues must be in raid in order for you to do the most damage you both need to have this uh this uh, glyph and beside the first tricks that you will do on tank for aggro every else uh every uh, other um uh, tricks you are doing on cooldown on the guy you are trading with also really good thing uh, uh to to have here is you you should have some kind of a weak aura or add-on i was using aura 3 where i was uh, having only uh, tricks uh, ticked so i'm only tracking tricks and whenever guy that is uh, 
uh, using tricks i can see his tricks on cooldown that means i have it or any way that you can track it you know uh, because for example you see that he is coming off the cooldown on tricks in few seconds so in few seconds you will get the tricks for 15 seconds and your your killing spree is ready you will wait a little bit you will wait for that tricks to land on you and then use killing spree because that killing spree will do 15 percent more damage so that's a little bit of a min max you can do there uh, with those uh, tricks of the trade if you are clever and um, in a way that you are doing uh, your trades and uh, you have a way of tracking it actually uh, for the third major glyph, uh, there is a few different situations where you should use a few different glyphs. Now, Killing Spree is usually most versatile one, it's usually the, the, the best one. Now, few other situations where you will not use this glyph is, for example, in Ruby Sanctum, where you will use uh, Fan of the Knives, uh, fan of the knives glyph which is uh, let me find it here yeah increases damage done by fan your uh, fan of the knives by 20 percent which is really good for uh, for the odds if you are if you are outside if you are going inside this is that that is useless you don't want to do it you want to go with killing spree uh, also thing where fan of knives can be really good as a glyph is lich king honestly i do not recommend it uh, because especially uh, people usually play on Lich King with Sinister Strike obviously, Killing Spree and Fan of Knives. Now the reason why I don't recommend to play like that is you are changing tricks of the trade for the Fan of Knives. Uh, Fan of Knives is absolutely useless on Lich King in phase 1, in first transition phase, in phase 2 is good, only while the odds are up, while the Valkyrs are up, where you do a lot of damage on second transition phase is useless for the whole last phase is useless so you are changing one of the best glyphs by far uh, uh, you are changing it uh, for something that is good for 20% of the fight while you you are removing glyph that is good for 80% of the fight um, in my opinion really not worth it it's only worth it if you really 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 uh, if you are really struggling as a guild uh, with uh, Valkyr damage and then uh, you want to squeeze as much as possible damage on those Valkyrs but honestly if you have Fury Warriors if you have Retri Paladins if you have Unholy DKs that's their job they will demolish them you are not supposed to destroy Valkyrs uh, as a rogue but yeah, that's that's what I think at least. Uh, one more glyph that you might be using as well instead of killing spree is uh, exposed armor. Now this is extremely situational if for whatever reason you are needed to do exposed armor if warriors are not doing thunder. I, I would say if you have more than one warrior in raid, warriors always should do thunder. If if maybe you have only one, maybe uh, Rogue could do it, but honestly, I don't know. This is situational from guild to guild. If you are doing it, you need to have that glyph. And because if you are doing it without glyph, it's pointless. Like you are losing so much value. Because what glyph does, let me see if I have it somewhere here. I should be, yeah, there it is. Increase duration of exposed armor by 12 seconds. Um... Where is it here? Okay, there it is. So, with one combo point used, it gives you 6 seconds of uptime. With Glyph, it gives you 18 seconds. So, by just having one combo point spent on this, you are having 18%, 18, uh, 18 seconds uptime on it. So, it's, it's really, really good. If you are doing it, you must have that one. So, those are the Glyphs. Minor Glyphs, honestly, uh, vanish. Yeah, I mean, increasing movement speed after you vanish can be useful here and there. Uh, the other things are pretty much, you know, safe all and uh, uh, blurred speed or whatever it's called. So you can walk with sprint over the water. This is more of a world kind of thing, battleground stuff. But yeah, um, not really increasing your damage. 
in any way more of a utility kind of thing and I would say those two are the best uh, okay so now we are left with uh, lasting and this rotation so how the combat rogue rotation works is that uh, you have combo points and you have energy so you are uh, you have five combo points max you start with zero you have 100% uh, 100% energy you are using your spells uh, by using energy to produce combo points and then spend combo points and so on and so on now this seems to be like really self-explanatory of course but it's really important to distinguish what kind of spells you are using at which moments for example sinister strike is a combo point builder so whenever you use sinister strike you are using it to gain more combo points and that's the only reason why you are using the spell it's your spamming spell it's your a uh, spell that you press when you don't have anything else to press it's just something that you will press a lot so you use sinister strike to build combo points uh, and then you have other spells like uh, slice slice of uh, slice and dice rupture and eviscerate that are combo point spender so while the Sinister Strike is combo point builder, Slice and Dice, Rapture and Eviscerate are combo point spenders. Now how your rotation should be working and what are your priorities? So Slice and Dice must be always up, you must have 100% uptime. Pretty much what you will do is in your starting rotation, you will go do Sinister Strike, Sinister Strike, Slice and Dice. And you have it up. And you need to keep it up always, until the end of the fight. Now, that's your priority. Now, second in the list of priorities is your Rapture. So, your priority goes like this. I don't have po combo points, I use Sinister Strike to build combo points. I don't have Slice and Dice, I use Slice and Dice. I have Slice and Dice, I don't have combo points. Sinister Strike to gain combo points. Now, I have Slice and Dice, I have 4 or 5 combo points. I don't have Rapture, I will use Rapture. I go again, building combo points. Getting to 5 or 4, I have Slice and Dice, I have Rapture, I will use Eviscerate as a filler. And that's it. Like, that's the, that's the whole rotation. That's the whole rotation with priority. Uh, slice and Dice is up. Uh, a slice and Dice is not up, I use Slice and Dice. Slice and Dice is up, Rapture is not up, use Rapture. Slice and Dice and Rapture are up, use Eviscerate as a filler. Beside this... For your rotation, you have uh, three additional spells. You have Killing Spree, you have Blade Flurry, and you have uh, Adrenaline Rush. Now, these three are cooldowns. And uh, uh, there is certain rule when you should use them. Now, pretty much Blade Flurry and Killing Spree you should use on cooldown. The only exception when you should not use them on cooldown is uh, when you when you know that for example in few seconds there are odds coming so notably on um, uh, halion 25 man heroic odds are coming you obviously are not gonna use killing spree and blade flurry uh, before uh, just before odds on boss where in few seconds uh, you will have 10 odds there uh, or on lich king you won't use it on Lich King when Valkyrs are coming in few seconds and so on and so on. But if if there is no odds coming, you are using it on cooldown pretty much. Maybe also the thing uh, that you can do if you are tracking procs of, on your trinkets, for example, you see your, sharp, uh, your Twilight Scale will proc in a few seconds, you have Killing Spree up, just wait a little bit, okay, it proc'd, now you do it. Also... The thing where you should wait with your killing sprees, if you see that uh, that other guy that you are trading tricks with, he's coming off cooldown, 
pretty much if you are trading on cooldown with each other you can see on your your killing spree on your uh, tricks as well if your tricks is coming off cooldown probably the other guy is coming off cooldown soon so in few seconds you will have it you have it then you use killing spree if it's like five ish seconds of a delay it's worth to wait for 15 percent extra damage 100 percent um blade flurry same thing if odds are coming save it for them if not eh, it's it's you know it's same kind of thought process as uh, uh as a killing spree now uh for both killing spree and adrenaline rush uh, they are regenerating you energy now adrenaline rush is pretty much that's what his tooltip says increases your uh, energy regeneration rate by 100 percent so you'll have much more energy so normally you want to use it when you are depleted on energy so you for example i have proc now never mind but you know you are low on energy and then you want to use it so you start regaining energy and stuff like that so you never want to use it when you are capped on energy or high on energy you want to use it when you are low on energy same thing with blade flurry and uh, killing spree uh, blade flurry uh, uh, killing spree doesn't uh, gives you energy by itself but while you are using killing spree you are not doing anything else you cannot spend any combo points so your your energy is passively regenerating while you are doing killing spree and that's why you wanna deplete your energy then you use your killing spree and by the time the killing spree is over you are almost full or full on energy as well one thing that is really important about energy is that you don't want to cap it you pretty much ideally uh, except on some fights for example like Sindragosa when she goes up like you will be uh, energy capped but uh, you know you never want to be 100% energy if you are 100% on start, that's okay and normal. But after that, you never want to to cap the the energy because while you are capped on energy, you are not regenerating any energy. And eventually, in the long term of the fight, that means the all energy that you didn't regenerate it because you were 100% while in fight you you are lacking you are missing out on that energy to spend it later on on some sinister strike or some extra ability and basically equals to losing dps uh, also really notable spells uh, obviously kick for some bosses you will use here and there but yeah that's not something that is really important but spell that i think people are not using uh, really often and it's really really good and it's insane how it's good it's faint so what faint does it costs 10 uh, it's uh, 20 energy it's 10 second cooldown so it's a really really small cooldown and it's uh, up for six seconds so basically if you want to have this always up you will have four seconds of downtime downtime now what it does is uh, uh, you are losing some uh, threat obviously but that's not the important part here you will never have a threat problem as a rogue uh, but uh, reduces damage you take from area of effects by 50% this is insanely how good it is on Sindragosa you always have AoE damage ticking on Professor Last Phase you have always AoE damage ticking blistering is aoe damage uh, when you are stacking on professor on oozes it's aoe damage uh, and all of those things you can reduce by 50 percent by faint now obviously this is dps loss if you are using it but there will be situations when your damage is not important but uh, it's important to stay alive and this spell if used or this ability will save your life so many times also really important spell cloak of shadows 1.5 uh, minute cooldown 19 seconds cooldown 90 percent uh, chance to resist spell um, for five seconds this is almost like an immunity for certain things a uh, really good uh, really good usage on professor really good usage on syndragosa where combined with faint you pretty much don't need to run away from blistering you just stay max melee range and uh, and you are fine 
uh, and so on and so on. A really, really, really good spell. And uh, removing vile gas uh, if you preemptively use it and stuff like that. Like it's it's a really important spell uh, to use and you should use it a lot. Evas uh, evasion though not really useful as survival because pretty much you are never gonna uh, take hits. Uh, if you take hits, that probably means that you are wipe wiping or something like that but there is one thing and one situation when this spell is really really good and it's on um, a lich king uh, when you are starting and uh, if you are waiting for your blade uh, blade flurry and killing spree for uh, the first ghouls to spawn uh, you want to use uh, evasion before that because ghouls if they hit you they are dazing you and uh, especially on heroic if you need to move away from the shadow traps if you get dazed you'll be slowed uh, it will be much harder for you to move you need really really good reflexes and timing in order to do that if you use evasion preventively most likely you will just dodge those attacks and you will not get dazed so that's like really good usage of this spell and pretty much only usage of this spell in the whole ICC of Groovy Sanctum, kind of, yeah. Uh, sprint and uh, Nitro Boots uh, allows you to, to do some crazy stuff and crazy movement and uh, allows you, for example, on bosses like Professor to have more uptime on the targets. Uh, on uh, on uh, abilities like uh, uh, Bonestorm and Marogar allows you to plan your movement so you have uptime on the boss all the time and stuff like that. Really important. Vanish really important also. Professor, uh, when targeted with tools, you can vanish it off uh, and stuff like that. Also, uh, when you vanish, you lose 100% of your aggro. So if you have aggro problem for whatever reason, just vanish instantly, you lose uh, uh, any aggro you had. Uh, and that's it pretty much for the spells uh, and abilities you will need to use. Fan of Knives, I already said uh, about it uh, while we were talking about the glyphs. Now one thing that is important and that I recommend you to do uh, on certain fights when you need to use Fan of Knives like uh, Halion and stuff like that, it's really good that you switch your weapons. So uh, ideally when you are normally DPSing you want your slow weapon in your main hand uh, fast weapon in your off hand but when you are doing fan of knives you have your slow weapon in your off hand as well for the uh, more damage on your fan of knives uh, here you can put instant poison as well uh, or yeah pretty much uh, on on this weapon and how i do this is i have like macro if i press sinister strike uh, I have equip macro that says equip this in main hand, equip this in off hand. If I press, uh, if I press uh, fan of knives, I have macro that says equip this in main hand, equip this in off hand, and use fan of knives. I will link this uh, this macros in description as well. Uh, so if you know that you will use this, make sure you put poison on your third weapon as well. Um, is there anything else I wanted to say? Yeah, flask, uh, attack power, uh, pots, um, potions of speed. For hay, uh, for food, you want to use feast. Now, feast gives you attack power. Uh, it gives you, if I remember correctly, 80 attack power. Now, 80 attack power equals 2 times 40 attack power, and 2 times 40 attack power is equaling 2 attack power gems. Now, if you use, for example, armor pen food, it gives you 40 armor pen, which equals 2 times 20 armor pen, which equals 2 armor pen gems, which is same proportion of the power you are getting. But the thing is, uh, Feast gives you also uh, X amount, I think 48 or something like that, spell power. And spell power is the thing where you gain a little bit because your poisons are spells. So you should always use uh, a feast uh, instead of any personal food. Maybe it's worth more to cup if you have, uh, if you have, uh, if you are lacking forty at, uh, armor pen for the cup. Maybe it's worth more to uh, just 
get that 100% armor pen with the food but yeah that's pretty much it also the the second beast profession this is what i didn't said is uh, jewel crafting because it allows you to gain extra armor pen it gives you these 34 armor pen uh, gems and later on as well you can use 34 hit depending how you scale your stats how you game and stuff like that it doesn't matter much but you will gain more stats and the most stats you will gain from jewel crafting uh, by far because usually you are getting a word of um, how, how would I say for example on enchanting if you if you if you enchant your rings you will get 40 attack power 40 attack power that equals to two gems but uh, when you have engineer uh, this jewel crafting you are gaining 34 multiple by three so you are gaining extra stats there um, instead of yeah but it, it's pretty much like the math is there uh, just use those two uh, for uh, if you want to min max a little bit uh, also the jewel crafting is only profession that allows you to gain extra armor pen uh, from uh, enchanting you'll get attack power uh, from uh, inscription attack power more attack power here from letter working more attack power here on this enchant and stuff like that but jewel crafting is only profession that will give you more armor pen and with engineering that I already explained before why it's so good those are two bis professions for the race obviously i when i was explaining about expertise uh on a bis setup uh definitely orc is uh, what you want to go with but if you don't have a weapon from a 25 man lich king heroic and you don't have double axes um, then troll is the best uh, best option before you get uh, havoc if that's if you want to super min max like everything um, and yeah uh, I think that would be pretty much it about about uh, everything you need to know and maybe like let's do the the, the opening rotation because that's the thing that I was not doing now let me just put poisons I forgot where my things were I was not playing for a year so let me find those. So pretty much you start uh, without um, stealth. There is no point for you to go stealth. You go double sinister strike, uh, double sinister strike, uh, slice and dice. Uh, spend some more combo points and do your bursting and then just priority damage slice and dice rupture eviscerate so let's go a little bit I mean, it's it's pretty much it's pretty much it. So, I think I a little bit fucked up there. I was not playing for a year, but you you get the point. Priority damage is there for opening. Two sinister strikes, slice and dice. Spend some if you have a lot of energy. Do blade uh, blade flurry. Do uh, uh, deplete your energy. Do your uh, uh, killing spree. Build up energy, spend some more combo points to get uh, Rapture up, deplete your energy, use your Adrenaline Rush, and then you just repeat the priority damage target. Uh, priority damage rotation, uh, build combo points, slice and dice, build combo points, Rapture, build combo points. If both of these are up, go Eviscerate. If one is not up, slice and dice always have priority over anything else and um, yeah that's it pretty much so hope you find this useful and if you have any questions ask and yeah that's it pretty much thank you for watching and see you